1908, Nikola Tesla created something so insane that it's been kept a secret for over a hundred years. But even today, the information that I'm about to show you has been dismissed as just a coincidence, or even the world's biggest lie. Before we examine Tesla's creation and the rumours surrounding it, I need to show you an event that happened strangely at the same time. Towards the end of June 1908, it's been reported that Nikola Tesla was pestering the Library of Congress. He apparently was making requests to see maps of the least populated areas in Siberia. Days later, on the 30th of June, in Tunoska, Siberia, something huge, estimated to be 100 metres in diameter, came down and instantly charred 80 million trees over an area of 1,300 miles. This mysterious blast is still confusing scientists today, as the only logical conclusion could be a meteorite. And yet when eyewitnesses looked at the sky, they saw no vaporisation trail which would be consistent if some kind of comet-like object was in the sky. Nor was a comet ever found, and even to this day, no crater has ever been discovered. So what was this bizarre event that took place a hundred years ago? Well, I'm not going to lie to you, Nikola Tesla looks an awful lot like the accidental culprit. In England, a gentleman wrote down in his journal that on the 30th of June, he did not need a night lamp to read his book. Even though it was 2am, the sky was so bright that it made it feel like it was perpetually daylight. Whilst aboriginals described seeing also a lingering bluish light in the sky, and one local Siberian man witnessed the actual blast. He claims he saw the sky miraculously open, and a beam of fire appeared in the forest. He then heard a loud crash and witnessed the sky closing. The ordeal was apparently so overwhelming that his wife had to carry him indoors so that he could lie down. However, something kind of isn't adding up here because meteors don't do this. Their effects only last a few seconds with seismic activity usually following. But this light show in the sky in Tunuska was reported by people globally for days even after the 30th of June. And so, with all of that being said, I think it's time that I introduce to you the plot twist of the century. There is a rumour, whether it's true or not, it goes like this. Nikola Tesla is the person who caused the event at Tunoska. If you're not familiar with Tesla's work, he quite literally was a genius. He is the one who is responsible for the majority of technology that we still rely on today, including x-rays, radio, remote controls, robotics, electronic motors, lasers, and wireless electricity. Tesla saw the world differently and he personally believed that the world, Earth, could be split open like an apple just by applying the principle of mechanical resonance. I am confident that you'll make up your own mind on what happened on the 30th of June 1908, but here's what I heard about this event. In 1915, during an interview with the New York Times, Tesla disclosed his secret invention. He had created a teleforce, a large coil that could store large amounts of energy and electricity. Tesla claimed his instrument could harness unlimited free energy from space and could even convert it into a concentrated beam which Tesla could direct and aim at any given target. You probably knew that Nikola Tesla was a rather complicated character, but it's generally believed that he was a gentle soul, and his reason for inventing such a powerful instrument was to be used as a deterrent to other countries, as a sort of peacekeeping tool, as Tesla warned that his teleforce had the potential to do unimaginable things with just one zap. Take a look at this. Investor JP Morgan and other big wigs of society were interested in Tesla's latest invention, as he had already proved his capabilities when he invented the famous Wardenclyffe Tower, which could produce a whopping 100 million volts of electricity. And to all of my Texan subscribers out there, scientists at VivZiv Technologies revived Tesla's tower in your state, in Milford, with the scary hopes of getting rid of all electricity pylons and wires, and instead transmitting electricity completely through the air. 
I know, at this point, you're probably thinking, what's the connection between Nikola Tesla and the crazy event that happened in Tunuska, Siberia? Well, there are actually three fascinating stories. The first one, on the night that Nikola Tesla decided to test his Teleforce instrument, is the same night that he accidentally triggered a comet. By sending millions of volts of electricity into the sky, he somehow caused this comet to come down, colliding into Tunuska. Our second story is even wilder. Tesla had an eccentric friend who he kind of wanted to impress. So because his instruments had communication abilities, he thought it would be a cool idea if he could contact him a few miles away and also give him a dazzling light show in the sky. However, after Tesla conducted this experiment, after looking at his readings on his teleforce, he is said to have uttered these two words. Oh. No. He had seriously overexceeded the target of the Ellesmere sky and had sent 10 megatrons of TNT into the atmosphere, which was the cause of the huge blast that we've been talking about. And the third rumour makes Tesla seem a little bit more calculating. As already mentioned, Tesla wanted access to maps of Siberia, where there were no houses and no human civilizations for miles around. It was there where he would trial his new invention. And what makes people even more convinced of this story is the fact that if you draw a straight line from Tesla's lab in Long Island, eventually you will land precisely on what remote area? Tunuska in Siberia. Okay, you might be skeptical of what happened 100 years ago, but what happened 10 years ago is going to be very hard to disbelieve. On the 15th of February 2013, once again in Siberia, locals thought the world was ending. What they saw was a 59 foot meteor which smashed through the atmosphere at 40,000 miles per hour. This time, people weren't as fortunate, and this blast knocked down a factory wall and sent shockwaves which shattered windows, and sadly, many people endured burns to their skin and retinas because of the extreme light that was emitted from this fireball. I wonder whether I should share this with you now, but this actually could happen all over again. It has been estimated that there are as many as one million asteroids in our solar system, and NASA is currently tracking 30,000 and potential problems to our little green Earth. Let me venture away from science for a moment and let me put this hair raising scenario before you. We you to imagine that NASA contacts all of the biggest news stations and they tell the reporters to announce this breaking news. There is not one, there is not two, but there are a hundred asteroids and they're falling and we all need to prepare because they're about to hit our Earth. What would you do in that situation? Perhaps you'd call your loved ones. Perhaps you'd start digging a hole very, very fast. Perhaps you get into your car and start driving. But I wonder how many of you would call out to God and ask for help. Over to you. What would you think of a man who only ever contacted his friend when he was in trouble? When everything was going honky-dory, when everything was well, he never got in touch with his friend. But as soon as trouble knocked on the door was the moment he demanded his friend's help immediately. You'd say that man is selfish and you tell the friend that he needs to block this man and get some new friends. And yet that is how millions of people treat God every single day. For 364 days of the year they ignore God but on that one day when they get that health scare, on that one day when one of their family members is in trouble, they cry out to God and expect God to come running to their every beck and call. Sometimes God, in his mercy, answers that call and he delivers them from that solution. But as soon as everything is okay again, they treat God like Aladdin's genie and tell him to climb back into his lamp. My friend, you cannot treat God like that. Just like I cannot call out to the President of the United States of America and demand that he answers my calls immediately, how much more the God of the universe? But you want to hear something beautiful? Even though God is a trillion times more powerful than any President or Prime Minister, if we make time for God, he will also make time for us. The Bible says, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. You might say to me, Joe, I actually have tried to draw near to God in the past, but he still feels a million miles away. What would you say to me? I would say one word, 
sin. Our sin is the thing that has distanced us from God. You see, God cannot allow us to indulge in any kind of sin, to indulge in any type of idol. God will not share us with anyone else. He wants us totally to himself. So what do we do if we have this problem? Or we seek his solution. On the cross, the Lord Jesus Christ became our sin bearer. That means that when Jesus died on that cross, all of our sins that were attributed to our account, the debt that we hold to God, the thing that distances ourselves from God, was transferred onto the Lord Jesus Christ. And there, as Jesus was nailed to that cross, our sin was paid for. It was paid for on the nail by his own blood. That's what baptism is a picture of. It's when a person goes down beneath the water, they are showing that their old life, their sins are gone and buried with Christ. But when they come out of the water, they are being raised to new life because Jesus rose from the dead for our justification. In other words, it's just as if I have never sinned. You know when Jesus came down to earth, he built a sort of bridge, a bridge between God and man. And it is an invisible bridge, but I'll tell you, one day if you put your trust in him, you'll walk up that bridge all the way to heaven because of everything that Jesus did so we can now have a right relationship with our creator again. And if you'd like a scripture for this, listen to this one. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Hey now, back to my original question. I don't know if one day many asteroids will fall down to Earth, but there's one thing I am certain of. In the final moments of Earth, the Bible makes a prediction. In the Old Testament and the New Testament, throughout the whole scripture, there is a prediction that one day the stars will fall down from heaven. And when that happens, many people will cry out to this God who they've rejected for many years, and they'll cry out for mercy. If you want to know more about that event, you need to see this right away.